So about a year ago today, I uh, was an ICCM Nairobi fellow and went straight into the Philippines to work on Typhoon Haiyan, where I used to live 20 years ago. I actually lived in Jakarta in the 70s, in the Philippines, surviving six coup d'etat attempts, marching with my parents in the People Power Revolution, and familiar with the cycle of corruption and international development and disasters in my community. Fast forward to 2010, I was the digital director and policy advisor to the deputy mayor's campaign against Rob Ford, but we know how that turned out. Um, so growing up in this system was where I experienced places with such desperate needs for basic infrastructure, as well as vibrant and active communities, and likewise an abundance of infrastructure and just real challenges with trying to get civic and community engagement. At the time as well, I was working with the Volunteer Center of Toronto, where we were the community hub for a number of initiatives where corporate funding was being driven into volunteer centers to fund community projects. It was at this time where, you know, this picture really blew my mind with the trust, the trust game uh, taken to another level, where study after study showed that um, employee engagement and recruitment and retention activities were not helped by team building activities. And that's where a lot of these budgets were then diverted into community building activities, which was at the hub of the volunteer center. At the same time, I learned about Ushahidi as well in 2008, as well as 2010 during the Toronto Haiti crisis camp, and saw how data visualization could really help the tangle of NGOs and businesses and governments and the active private citizen networks, particularly for Typhoon, Haiyan and citizen reporting, looping it all together, giving a voice to communities. So when I first landed in the Philippines, there were maps, maps and more maps, duplicate maps, private maps, expensive maps and hidden maps, and wanted to find a way to have a cross-sector platform where we could share all this data openly with the communities and across the sectors locally. So this is uh, the beta version that we have here where we're mapping organizations with their profiles, their programs and services, and their catchment area so we can map the programs and services across the country, and more importantly, allow the organizations to post their needs, whether it's one day or one to five year plans to help break the cycle of perpetual grant um, funding applications. We're also helping address some of the duplicate efforts with needs assessment by organizing it on the platform. So we take a lot of the data that uh, the UNIM team works on, uh, we attach the four W's, uh, when actually the four W's there, as well as map the information that's given to us by the private sector. So that's largely the 60 corporations that are leading the rebuild in the Philippines. And essentially we're mapping what is happening to our communities, who is doing what where to better connect and collaborate more efficiently. And this extends beyond disaster to year-round crisis um, and community resiliency mapping where we're able to identify high-risk areas um, in advance of the next disaster and apply additional support with partnerships with the media to add special attention to those areas. So OpenStreetMap, we are providing free training programs, train the trainer programs to help spread the word of OpenStreetMap in the Philippines. We have our amazing drone network here where we're able to deploy drones within 24 to 72 hours across the country with our awesome drone team. We're also doing medical supply and document delivery while we're doing the mapping process and also building our, new, our own drones now. And we're providing internet white, uh, white space internet access to communities that don't have any internet so that the places that we map can then quickly upload um, their data onto the map using internet access broadcast through available TV channels. I was also concerned with the increase in anti-fishing, anti-fishing, -po poaching, and illegal mining activity in the country in the absence of more livelihood opportunities. So we're identifying these high-risk areas and then transforming them into more sustainable livelihood programs. For example, rice and coconuts uh, in the Philippines will take a year to 10 years to rebuild. So we're introducing a new agriculture product that is harvested within 45 to 70 days, and that's cash in the farmer's pockets with more sustainable farming practices, such as drip irrigation and um, composting. So we are about to announce on December 4th, we're celebrating OpenStreetMap's 10th anniversary and the first province to be mapped in the Philippines to kick off other mapping initiatives with OpenStreetMap in 10 other provinces. More importantly, we are sharing our maps onto GeoNode so we can access, um, provide access to the large international mapping community. And also, 
also uh, talking about licenses. So we will announce, announce an initiative at the end of next year where we map the Philippines. There are 7,000 islands in the Philippines, 7,000 reasons to come and help us map and choose your own adventure, whether you surf, you like to mountain climb, or go to the beach. And um, we ask you to join us and help us map the Philippines and make each day better. Thank you.